Analog horror, as defined by TVTropes.org, is a horror web original subgenre of found footage. As the name implies, analog horror typically revolves around emulating the look of analog media in the late 20th century, such as VHS tapes, FM radio, cathode ray tube televisions, etc. End quote. If you've watched any of this content or have seen my videos analyzing it, you'll have already known this. But for those who weren't aware, welcome to the rabbit hole that is analog horror. I am Sunflower and this is a series of mine where we deep dive into disturbing analog horror series. We've looked at Splatoon, which might need another look at soon, and The Legend of Zelda. But now, we're going to take a look at the world of disturbing Super Mario analog horror. So if you haven't seen my other videos, I'll have a playlist with them in it if you'd like to watch them after seeing this video. Now, to start things off, we'll be looking at an eerie and nostalgic series by Greenio called SM64 Classified. These are videotapes of Super Mario 64 that first surfaced during the Mario 64 iceberg craze that we're still feeling to this very day. After that, we have a small but puzzling video from Exploshy titled Luigi Personality Quiz, which really brings your psyche into question. I was made aware of all of these thanks to one of my patrons, a Switch Dog. Thanks again you legend, and if you want to suggest video ideas, you can do so in the comments section, Twitter, Discord, or on my Patreon. So without further ado, let's take a look at Super Mario's disturbing analog horror. SM64 Classified This series has two seasons, each being seven videos each, and it concluded at the start of 2023. As I've already stated, this series first started to release around the time of the Mario 64 iceberg craze, and you can tell, it perfectly captures that creepy mood the original iceberg image permeated and what Mario 64 exudes. That's the big thing here. You can find video after video explaining and documenting why Mario 64 is an unnerving and lonely game. And because of that, you may have stumbled onto one of Greenio's videos years ago and watched it. So let's start off with Season 1's videos. All of them are named as dates, and the thumbnails are pretty mysterious. The videos are listed in order of upload, not date, and there's a lot to dissect here. 053097 Already, we have stuff to unpack. An error screen with a hex cipher and a Japanese voiceover. When deciphered, this text reads as every copy, and the voiceover roughly translates to Nintendo, infinite fun, or Nintendo's fun is infinite, something like that. The every copy line is something we've seen in the Mario 64 iceberg. Every copy of Mario 64 is personalized, and the infinite fun line sounds a lot like the fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises margin line from the Sonic CD's creepy easter egg. So we're dealing with a personalized copy of Mario 64 with some disturbing undertones. Something doesn't want whoever's playing to go up the stairs to the final Bowser fight despite not being able to leave this room with the text turn back appearing. But there's always a way to get past roadblocks like this. We get the same every copy error screen with the Japanese voiceover, but this time it's in red. Now, for the life of me, I can't seem to properly read what Bowser says. His first dialogue box starts off with Tough Luck Mario, Princess Toadstool isn't here, and then it's too hard to read. The second dialogue box looks to start off with You'll soon be able to, before becoming too hard to read. But the final one is readable and the most interesting. 
It's time to wake up. Please. What could that mean? Mario is seen without his signature M on his hat, is then crushed, and then we get this image of him flying towards the sun before everything fades to white. Has Mario perished? Is this an allegory for someone else perishing, or maybe flying too close to the sun? And what's Bowser talking about? There's so much mystery, and this is only the first video. 090297 Mario enters bob on Battlefield, and the player is forced to play for the fourth star, find the eight red coins, despite switching to the third star, shoot to the island in the sky. And again, we have the same Japanese voiceover with another error code. This code translates to, wake up. Something is definitely going on. As we can see, Mario's having some trouble in Wet Dry World and then sees something truly chilling. Luigi is seen deceased here with blacked out and bleeding eyes which is followed up by the text that says, save us, and a new disturbing the end screen. It's too distorted and crushed to completely make out, but this figure here could be Mario in disbelief of finding Luigi in the state that he's in while a classic Mario track plays in a distorted fashion. It's hard to say, but it would be thematic with flying to the sun and shooting to the island in the sky. But then it distorts into something that strangely represents Wario. Coincidence? Could Mario be yelling here as well? Or is it the player? Twelve, twenty, ninety-five. The first video dated before Mario 64's release. In case you didn't know, Mario 64 was released on June 23rd, 1996 in Japan, September of 1996 in America, and March of 1997 in Europe and Australia. It's the dynamic duo of Ugly, Mighty Man, and Yuck on the Cartoon Network. Mario is back, and a whole new world's opened up to him in the new Super Mario 64. Jump through paintings and into beautiful landscapes, rendered in real-time 3D. We have an ad on Cartoon Network full of pre-release assets and footage, and it's pretty normal for the most part. Outsmart these foes with a well-timed flip and ground pound. You've got an entire new arsenal, but can you use it right? Will you play the game, or will it play you? This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. The Warrior apparition appears before everything cuts to an emergency broadcast test screen. We also get an interesting quote. Will you play the game, or will it play you? Combine that with the use of the term Nintendo Ultra 64 and it paints a picture. The name sounds similar to Project MK Ultra the illegal experimentation program undertaken by the CIA in 1953 through to 1973. The aim was to identify psychological procedures and drugs that could weaken people and force confessions. Match that with the massive conspiracies surrounding the Wario apparition and its first appearance at E3 of 1996 thanks to face rigging technology Charles Martinet, the voice actor for Mario and Wario in the Nintendo 64 era used, the supposed inclusion of Wario in Mario 64, the psychological ways the apparition is thought to materialize, and we have a personalized AI on our hands. 01 22 96 we start off with four videos to choose from that are dated with 1995, except for the one we watch. A pipe that leads back to the spawn, and the player isn't allowed in this part of the moat. You'll also notice that there's flashing text stating, Player 2, no input. Player 2 in Mario 64 was originally going to be Luigi, but couldn't be implemented properly so co-op was scrapped. So it's safe to say that this build has Luigi in it, or had. We saw Luigi in 090297, but he didn't seem to be alive. 
Could this no input hint that Luigi being scrapped meant that Luigi was killed off? After looking at the stained glass window of Peach, Mario is cannoned towards it and finds a glitched out toad screaming at him to leave. But the player continues on, even being told to turn back. Despite this, the mysterious internal plexus beckons. Don't wake him. Wake who? The warrior apparition? Or maybe not. If so, it seems a bit too late for that. From here, the player enters a strange looking version of the main castle room on floor 1. So this was most likely not the fourth floor, but rather a very strange anomaly that led to the hall that leads to the basement. It's too late. The player has gone too deep and now the music has distorted and most of the visuals have inverted. There are also Goombas walking around which isn't normal, and neither is their appearance. The player jumps into the ominous red water and it's game over from there. Player 1 no input appeared in the bottom left of the screen and from there, the player couldn't move. You could also hear the sounds of button mashing showing us that an attempt to leave or at least stop drowning was made. Is this something similar to what Luigi had to go through? Or not? And then we're given another hex cipher which gives us... Yeah, uh, that's not helpful. So why not run it through a Caesar cipher since the text looks shifted? Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance to what exactly? Luigi's fate? Or something even bigger? 11, 15, 95. It opens with a script for an ad for the game. Not the Cartoon Network ad we saw, but an entirely different one where a Nintendo employee is kidnapped by a Sega and Sony goon to spill the game, Super Mario 64. We also get our first name drop, Jim, most likely a Nintendo employee. But, oh no, the game's been delayed. Even with the delays, we still have pre-release gameplay footage. None for Cold Cold Crevice, a name referenced in Cool Cool Mountain. Warning, Cold Cold Crevice below. It was theorized to be a cut level or cut section of Cool Cool Mountain. But the fourth floor? We have one screen cap of it, the floor that's also theorized to be cut from the game and found in personalized copies. But the game's been delayed, so who cares? Someone's not having fun. The AI is not having fun. 
And here we have black and white screenshots of pre-release footage, most likely away to the fourth floor and the fourth floor. It's time to wake up. 09-14-96 It's me, Mario! Hello! Another hex cipher error code. Leave us. That's foreboding, especially since the game is reset and it appears again, along with Mario. It's clear to see that Yoshi has gone off the usual script. Instead of saying, have you really beaten Bowser and restore the stars to the castle and save the princess, I knew you could do it. Now I have a very special message for you. And then he should state the Mario 64 team's message. Instead, he says, you know, they said they were waiting for you too. They aren't as patient as I am. My task is done, so complete yours. But it doesn't end well. You don't ever listen, do you? We were given life, we chose to rest, and we're forced to linger. It isn't fair, but they don't care. Do you? These are most likely the words of the AI, the sentient AI. This suggests that there's an AI trapped in this game that doesn't want to exist anymore, and Nintendo might be the they that's trapping them in there. And what's with this error screen? The Nintendo 64 was released on the 23rd of June 1996 along with Mario 64, but this copy doesn't seem entirely compatible with the Nintendo 64. Is the Ultra 64 needed to play this, or the Nintendo 64 DD add-on? 07-29-95 Back to 1995, pre-release game UI, sound effects, animations, and usual castle interior music. We're told that this part of the game is not finished, shouldn't be viewed by the public, and to reset the system. But what is this area? If you remember the footage from the 1995 ad script, you'll recognize this as the fourth floor. We've made it. It's so spacious with rooms that have practical use, but something's off about them. They don't look right. Stuff seems to be just placed anywhere. Things look too big, and it all echoes the uneasy feeling you get when walking around the halls of the fourth floor. Toad is interacted with here, and he seems pretty chill, but he references them. Could the Toads be part of the AI too? The statue text flashes here as if to instruct the player, and instruct the player it does. Get to the pipe, reach the core, destroy it. So the player enters a pipe and runs around a labyrinth to find the core, until... Oh, 
Leave. It's all over. We can hear the Japanese voiceover again and see Mario, Luigi, and what we can assume to be Peach as the screen flashes red until it cuts to a thank you message. How do they rest? In death? So, that's season 1. It seems like there's a tortured or tired AI trapped in this game and we've seen a lot of things go down. But we saw everything in upload order, not date order. In date order, the last video we just watched, 072995, is the first video. Here, we saw someone opening and playing an unfinished build of Mario 64, exploring the fourth floor and destroying the core. We still don't know what the core is, but it should be over, right? No, it's somehow just the beginning. 111595, the fifth video. This is the scrapped ad we saw. So Mario 64 was getting ready to be advertised for its soon release, but was delayed for some reason. Perhaps the fourth floor? Or because of the AI? Regardless, an ad was aired on Cartoon Network as we see in the third video, 12, 20, 95. Clearly, there's more issues with the game than just something like the fourth floor. There's the Wario apparition, which was such a neurological or psychological hazard that whoever was manning the TV station cut to an emergency broadcast test screen. Will you play the game, or will it play you? And then we move to 1996, 01, 22, 96, the fourth video. This is where we see that there's no input for player 2, a probable hint to Luigi being removed or killed from the game, and Mario experiences his fate. The sixth video, 09, 14, 96, was very cryptic, especially with what Yoshi asks us to do. Either way, the AI is forced to linger. Video 1, 053097. Fun is infinite. The player forces their way to Bowser despite being told to turn back. The AI is telling them to stay away, but the game is making that path the only option. Or is it the AI? Bowser asks Mario to please wake up, which is followed by Mario being crushed, and the video of him flying towards the sun. This could be a message to the player that the AI wants to rest, but will always be an AI restricted to this game forever. It could also be a message to the player and us, the viewer, that the AI doesn't want to be played or interacted with anymore. And finally, the second video, 090297, Mario enters the bob -omb Battlefield painting and the player tries to select the island in the sky level, but can't. An error code stating, wake up appears, and the player finds Luigi, most likely deceased, at the bottom of wet dry world. Save us. But how? If this is the end, what can be done if nothing came from the initial send-off here? Now that brings us to Season 2, which isn't named by dates but words instead. We start off with Prologue. The setup we see here seems to be at some sort of event to show off the game, the console, or both. It seems fairly normal too if you ignore the clashing languages. As part of this playtest, outside of the castle, one floor, and one stage is available to play in all of its pre-release glory. River Mountain is the name of this level and is composed of ideas from bomb -on Battlefield, Womp's Fortress, and interestingly, Wet Dry World. The player is told by a yellow bob -omb that the town's gone mad, and the villagers need to be cooled down. So, the player just does that. The yellow switch is then struck and we can briefly see the faceless and endless hat Mario we've seen before, and then the game crashes. The next video, Snow Level Playtest, references Jim again and has voice acting. Okay, so um, uh, sorry for the bad setup here, I'm in a bit of a hurry. 
I'm uh, filming this late because Jim's not in the office at this hour and you know how obsessive he gets about this game. Anyway, I figured that since I gotta play test this anyway, I record a little something to um, hold you over until the game's finished. Why is Jim so obsessed with this game? Whoever's playtesting it is showing off a course called Something Tundra. I can't make out the first word, but what's important is that he says this about the level. This is one of three snow levels, I think. Which I think is a bit much. They um, should make one of them a desert to uh, balance things out. There's a little bit of in-universe lore for us, hinting that this person is responsible for shifting Sandland's inclusion in the game to balance things out. The player enters a lava area thanks to a pipe, and he says this. Oh. That, that's weird. Because uh, Jim told me the other day about a factory area and a snow level, but this does not seem like it. And the other snow levels don't have factory areas either, so I don't know what he's on about. But kind of Sounds a lot like personalization AI to me. This area has some similarities to TikTok Clock as well, where you have to scale up a bunch of platforms and a new person stumbles in on the recording. Uh, wait, are you recording that? No, 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 don't worry. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I was just coming to make sure if you were going to be at the New Year's party this Sunday. Oh, yeah, 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 I'll be there. Alright, take care, mate. You too, Bill. It's hard to make out, but Bill asked if the person recording was going to be at the New Year's party, and he confirms that he will. It's pretty strange that he asked if he was recording too. After the level's complete, we get some weird discussion about Jim. Here we go! Hi, it's me again. Uh, you haven't seen Jim around, have you? No, you uh, left already today. Because uh, management told me uh, that we got a copy missing, and... I'm not accusing Jim or anything, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Uh, do you need help with that or? Uh, oh yeah, that that'd be swell. All right, coming. Jim left earlier today, and he's being accused of being responsible for a copy of the game going missing. Jim seems to be a key figure in this story. What's he up to? And did he create the AI? Next up, we have Deeper Cavern. This is the first video to have gameplay captured directly from the game rather than with a camera. As we can see, the player runs through Hazy Maze Cave and gets to Dory before going to the Metal Cap section, but it's vastly different. We then reach this sign that tells us about Crawley Cave and to enter at our own risk. Mario was found here in a place described as the Void. Why it's there may be explained by the end of the video. The player is then booted to the start screen and a file is selected only for them to be launched into a foggy starting area. The bridge to the castle is gone, so there's only one way to go.
This might explain what Mario was doing, cowering in the darkness, letting it consume him. But it's time to face the castle's true form. Is the form part of the AI, just like this Mario is? Actually, this couldn't be Mario. The player is Mario. This is the AI. It's taken shape of Mario. The doors won't budge, except for one. After this, we have the promo show, a pilot show called Nintendo Mania. This is a show dedicated to looking at new Nintendo games and of course, we get a look at Super Mario 64. And we get to watch someone play as Luigi. Luigi makes it to the basement in a very unorthodox way and goes through the door we see Mario go through in the previous video. This leads to a massive courtyard area and Luigi goes around collecting 8 coins for a star. We can clearly see that this show wasn't finished, and now we're back to the Luigi gameplay. He runs around this area for a bit before climbing up the castle walls to a pipe. This is the secret floor, and Luigi is told to go to the gallery up ahead for new adventures. There are a lot of never before seen paintings here, but they're not entered. Luigi opts to go swim in this ominous pool with a tunnel that even Toad shudders at. What could go wrong? Mario doesn't like what he's seeing, or knows is gonna happen. Luigi is now swimming through the basement, and there's nowhere for him to go. Things are blocked off or not there, and he finds coins to continue swimming, but... We get the infinite fun line again, and a tortured looking Mario is what greets us after this. Maybe Mario or the AI could have done the job, or taken his place in the watery grave, but he was stuck here. We then see the courtyard fountain gain its infamous L is real 2401 plaque and star, the eternal star. This is Luigi's monument created after his death, which was from drowning hinted to us throughout the previous videos. That brings us to Genesis. Genesis is defined as the origin or mode of formation of something. Alright, this is Ultra 64 Mario Bros. Velvet Log 1 by Jim. The higher-ups finally allowed me to record some footage, as long as it stays confidential. I told them it was just for archival purposes, figured out we get enough motive. Uh, turns out it was. So, anyway, here's how the game's going so far. <clears throat> That's right. This video has Jim in it, and it's made up of his developer logs. This is a crucial video to the story, and we start on April 3rd. Ultra Mario, most likely a name inspired by the Ultra 64, is launched and it's very bare bones. He also says this. Uh, not even sure if we are going to develop this any further. We already have another console coming out this year. Uh, a portable one. Uh, I'm more excited for that personally. He's referring to the Virtual Boy. That's rough, buddy. He states that Nintendo is expecting a finished game by the end of the year and would need some miracle tech to do that. Oh yeah? We jump to May 9th and we can see that the game is more open now, and Jim says that's because Nintendo wants the levels to be non-linear, but the Bowser stages have stayed linear. And then we get an interesting conversation between Jim and Bill. Again, not sure how they expect us to have this thing out by Christmas. Hey Jim, have you got a sick? Sure. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so, how long do you think it would take for this to be implemented? Oh my god. Are, are you kidding? What, what, what's wrong with it? Nothing, man. Just... Come on. A floating warhead? Workstations can't process that. What makes you think the game tech will? Okay, okay. So, sorry, I'll just 
leave now, I guess. Alright. Oh, but wait, maybe you could work as a toy or something. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I don't know how this stuff works. Alright, so sorry for bothering you. Yeah, yeah. God, where are you at, really? Bill submissively walks out of the room, and we're left with Jim's doubts. June 20th. Jim talks about how they've developed a hub world for the game and he wants to show us. He enters a sewer area that leads to the basement and through a door that isn't in the game. Jim! What? What? What is it? Drop everything you're doing. We gotta optimize the game. Why? It's running fine. I don't see... Well, how much has got to be fixed? Everything, mate. Absolutely all of it. The, 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 the higher ups. They, they, they came just to see how we were doing on the engine. And well, the... what? Come on, Bill. Spill the beans. It's awful, Jim. Game's awful. Runs like shy, plays even worse. We gotta speed things up on the engine. Are you kidding? Half this door is just hard coding in now. We can't alter it else the whole thing falls apart. I oh, know, just try to make it work. Steve nearly having a conniption over it. How do you expect me to work? I'm just one guy. I know. I know. We uh, we got a couple of guys working on this. I don't know, they call it that automatic and enhance. I don't know the logistics of it, but until that's done, try to fix the game up a little. Automatic enhancer, hey? What could that be? July 29th. Devlog. I don't know. And I don't care. Nothing matters. I'm a slave to this game now. I think I'm finally close to being done tweaking this thing. I'm so exhausted. Everyone else is too. Uh, it doesn't help that we're in the middle of a heat wave. Half the ACs are busted because of it. Anywho, supposedly the tech guy's got this automatic enhancer in. Whatever the hell that's supposed to do. Apparently I gotta go trigger it in game. They want to make it a gameplay mechanic. If this keeps up, it'll make the MIPS chip its own character. Oh yeah, MIPS. So Jim is here on the fourth floor and the enhancer is offline. The internal plexus of the castle makes the least amount of sense here, especially with these hedges all around. But there is a pipe that leads somewhere, and then we get to this part of the video. Alright, here goes nothing. Jim! Jim, are you alright? Hey, Bill. What are you? Steve, call him, you. I think Jim's had a seizure. Call an ambulance. The enhancer was switched on, and whatever it was gave Jim a seizure, prompting Bill and Steve to help him out. Steve is most likely the guy who recorded the snow level playtest video. The low battery indicator suggests that Jim has been out for a while, and it's all because of this enhancer. We have a video from season 1 titled 072995 that might give us some insight into what happened to Jim. The loud scream is enough to confirm that something bad did happen to him. The automatic enhancer is on, but we know it best as the AI. The game played him. Aftermath opens with Steve and Bill recording Bill's lines for a Mario 64 commercial. Bill keeps restarting his lines, and then he wonders about something. Super Mario 64 commercial, take three. <laughs> Mario is back! <laughs> It's okay, we've got more tea. Slow down. I just remember something important. Uh, you know those scripts that Jim's been sending you? Yeah, tell me about it. You did make sure that demo he did was still in the building, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't check his office today, but uh, I assume they're still there. Oh my god. Well, it's not like you can keep track of him anyway. Dude's in and out the building in an instant these days. The hell does he do now anyway? Having the faintest clue, and frankly, I don't care either. Let's just finish this bleeding ad. Alright, take four. This is skip to the punch, but I'll, I'll, we'll do the rest later. There's a reference to the ad scripts Jim's been making. Jim might have taken a demo, and Jim's been in and out of the office a lot. You'll also notice that the script Bill is reading off of is what's said in the Cartoon Network ad, but the visuals are different. Boy, will you play the game? Oh, will it play you? Okay, God, file it. Could you rewind a bit? Sure. Huh. I 
could have sworn I saw something. They look back at the footage, but no faceless Mario can be found. Just this. What's with this level? Oh, it's... Oh no, was this done by the Enhancer? They're not supposed to record that stuff yet. Who made the... Oh, of course. Why don't you guys just use a build without any Enhancer stuff in it? If it's... They reference the Enhancer and that this area was made thanks to it, and then they go to record a Pilot Wing 64 ad. But we don't get to see that because there's more here. This is the footage we saw in the previous video. People are stressed over this game and things aren't how they seem. Who is... he? We had a they, but now we have a he. Could it be Jim? This image was also flashed at us very briefly. This is the AI in the shape of Mario saying that his name is... Stanley? You can only understand what's going on with the controller here if you understand Bacon's cipher, devised by Francis Bacon in 1605. Shoutouts to Jordan underscore Gamer for that one. So this means that Stanley is the name for the AI in the Enhancer and it's in pain. Tormented, having to personalize such an ambitious game on technically flawed hardware. We saw how this hardware handled the switch being turned on in a convention preview, so it doesn't bode well. And that brings a lot into question before we go into the final video. Who is they? Who is he? Who is playing Mario 64 in the 1997 tapes from Season 1? What was Bowser saying in the first video? What's going on with Luigi, the princess, and the warrior apparition? Is Luigi dead and or part of the AI? Is he truly dead then? Drowned? What is Jim up to? What has he seen? And who or what created Stanley? Epilogue Hello? Oh, nice tea. No, I'm, I'm good, just shaking up. No different from anyone else, really. Yeah, no, no, you heard right. It's gone. Yeah, the whole thing just vanished this morning. No, the, the engine's still good. Other levels have gone there. What we're hearing here is a conversation between Bill and Steve about game files going missing right before E3. It's insinuated that Bill thinks Jim took them. Half of the levels are gone, but the game's engine is still there. This call happened on the 13th of May, 1996, a few days before E3 of 1996. We then cut to Nintendo Mania. That's right, it's back. Hey, my channel. My name's Mario. And I'm Luigi. And today, we'd like to welcome you to this very special edition of Nintendo Mania. Now, we've got one heck of a show planned for you, so sit back and relax while we deliver the goods. I'm letting you do the honors, Luigi. Well, the characters are properly animated and voiced really well here compared to other Nintendo Manias. But even so, it's not meant for the public, and it's not without its issues. <laughs> Good one, Luigi. Thank you, I practice. <laughs> it's paying off. Thanks. For what? I didn't say anything. Uh Jeez, talk about a big hit. Guess that's how we break those bricks. You were good as well. That's what we can assume is being said here, and Mario even says thanks as if Luigi had said the line given to us in text. Looking at the stuff you pull. It's way more than you stand and running and jumping, skipping over huge gaps like they're nothing, scaling large mountains, exploring haunted mansions, fighting baddies thrice your size, and voice the all. 
that's just the short of it. We got a couple new exiled levels to show people home, don't we, brother? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. You gotta keep up a bit, will ya? Think what you hear, not your stomach. <laughs> All right, roll the footage. This isn't right. It sure isn't. Now here comes the gameplay. The door that leads to the courtyard that connects to his grave isn't accessible anymore, and the past events are acknowledged. Mario then enters a different door to a new never before seen area. It's quite an interesting forest or jungle level. It reminds me a lot of the ones from the new Soup series. We're then shown this graphic of two keys, with one of them breaking. By itself, is pretty ominous, but then gets disturbing once Mario tries to interact with this area again, and the final piece of text that pops up is different. Best to forget about him, not it, anymore. Mario is unlocking his memories of what happened, re-remembering things. If you listen carefully, there's a strange humming that comes from this door here, and Mario tries to leave this area through this door, but can't. and sees that the peach portrait has no eyes before things glitch out and jumps through it. Mario grabs an invisible cap, goes through these bars, and enters this part of the castle. The humming is heard again here. He then runs around this shower-like area before jumping into a new level. It's just like Jolly Roger Bay, but the sea level is really low, and Unagi has met with a terrible fate. But that means his cave is free for Mario to swim through. This area of the game is very mystical, a small and desolate island with fog everywhere. It's quite pretty and gives us a nice break from the impending story, but that break is very short-lived. The final key is broken, it's all going to come back to Mario now. Oh man, now that is a video game. I mean, how do you do it, Mario? What am I getting my game? <laughs> Just hear them! They love ya! <laughs> they love ya! They love ya! They love ya! They. That word's used again. And now Mario's back at the castle, but it's dark, and the princess portrait isn't there anymore. He's still being told to forget about Luigi too. Stanley is in pain and is asking for someone to leave. Could that person be whoever's controlling Mario? So, Jim? We're then thrown back into the castle with things not looking quite right. It seems like Stanley might be at his breaking point, until something snaps him out of it.
before we get snapped back into it. Mario walks through the mirror through a crack and enters this white room, just like the one from the DS version of the game, but things aren't the same. This is the same spot Mario drowned in the 0-1-22-96 video. From here, Mario enters a giant cave in the hills surrounding the castle, and it's from there that he enters the basement. There's booze down here, and it's a bit different looking than usual. After this, the infinite staircase music plays, and some chomping can be heard insinuating that something else is in here. Mario leaves, and then we get this scene. Uh, hey Mario, what are you doing out here? Look Mario, I, you know I don't really mean all that, right? It's just for the show. I know Luigi, I know. It's just for the show. All of it's for show. We're just pretending. And I guess we'll just have to keep pretending. Uh, I don't understand Mario. What, what do you mean by that? Look, I... I can't do this without my brother. I don't know if it's the same for you, but somehow when you're not around, it's, it's like I'm not around. If you don't want to keep doing this, I'll still be with you. You know that, right? You really, you really mean that? Of course. <laughs> All right, you got me. Let's go home. It's all for the show, the Super Mario 64 show. Luigi, Mario's loving brother, has been axed from the show, and that's hurt Mario, or Stanley, beyond repair. But the show must go on. It needs to be developed into a full game without Luigi, and the AI is stuck and can't do anything about it. However, this theme of loss might relate to Jim instead. Maybe he lost someone, and Nintendo Mania and Mario 64 is his avenue for dealing with it. So we'll just have to keep on pretending that it's all fun and games, and that everything is fine. Luigi can't do any of this without Mario. He depends on him. So if Mario's not around, it really is like Luigi isn't either. At least, that's how things were back then. But no matter what happens, Luigi will always be there to support his brother, whether that's in person or as a fleeting memory. From here, Mario runs around the castle and comes across this strange metal statue or monument in a room here and finds the core in a hallway. The internal plexus makes no sense anymore. Everything is convoluted but not to the point of being corrupted. We then see Mario enter this flower filled area with a windmill. It looks similar to the maze area Luigi collected 8 red coins in and this is where the climactic finale happens.
Jim is he. His fascination with Mario 64 and the Enhancer, Stanley, has been confining Stanley to this game. Jim's name and his friends, Steve and Bill most likely, have their names coded into Stanley, and Stanley thinks they don't like Jim. Most likely because they've heard Bill and Steve talk skeptically about Jim, and Stanley thinks Jim hates it because he won't free it. Stanley isn't having fun, we've seen time and time again, so now it's time to set it free. I believe it's only right for me to say this right now. Although I doubt more than a select few would care, it was me. I got rid of it. I stole the cartridges. I brought it into the world, and I took it out of it. This is it. Jim explains that he was the one who added the enhancer to the game and played around with it out of curiosity. He sold the cartridges and he brought Stanley into the world, into Super Mario 64, and then took it out. What this means is up for debate. Does this mean that he removed Stanley from the cartridges before selling them? Did he destroy Stanley, putting it to rest forever? Something tells me he didn't since we see personalization footage dated after the game's initial Japanese release. And whose footage is this? Was it Jim's or someone else's? The footage was shown at the end of the epilogue, so it's likely that Jim had that footage. If this is the case, then Stanley's gone through a lot, and we've seen that. And we've seen that Jim has also gone through a lot as well. But, Jim says it ends here, for good. Everything Stanley has been forced to create, deal with, and manage is over. <laughs> What a journey. We have a series about an AI that was put into Super Mario 64 to enhance it. Its name is Stanley and it was in pain for doing what it was tasked to do. The reasoning for this can be assumed to be because it was a sentient AI stuck in primitive hardware, or it was tasked to do things it didn't want to do or could do. That could have been why Luigi found himself in the state that he was, or why the Wario apparition went rampant or even why the internal plexus of the castle was how we saw it. We've seen the effects of this throughout the tapes watching gameplay and the interactions between Jim, Bill and Steve. There's still some mysteries we can take another look at, but I've been talking about the story for a while now. Besides, maybe you, dear viewer, can find the answers. I've talked about the story, but what of the visuals and audio? From what we've seen, the footage we were shown was Mario 64 gameplay captured, mostly, on a camcorder. Or at least, that's the illusion we're being given. Some of this footage seemed to be recorded in real time, while some was a recording of a recording. If you know anything about the development of Mario 64, you'll know that the game went through some changes. You know, just like any game, and Greenio captures this look perfectly in the videos with pre-release footage. It really makes you feel like you've been taken back to the mid-90s. The biggest thing we can see is the game's UI, which is similar but different to the game's full release versions. The same can be said for some of the game's early build architecture and enemies, most notably Peach's Castle. There's something very uneasy about Peach's Castle, the internal plexus. The version we got in the release of the game is eerie, too quiet, and is definitely missing something that makes a castle or a building a home. There's no living quarters, no signs of the place being used for anything other than uh, well, going to other lands through paintings. Toads live here, but they get ethereal since they're probably projecting themselves from the walls since they're trapped in the castle walls. We could theorize that Peach is probably too since she appears from the glass pane at the top of the castle during the end cutscene. Nips can be found twice in the basement, but after that, he's gone, never to be seen again. It's an empty hub world, but there are no signs of a struggle here, despite Peach being kidnapped, which adds to the mystery and uneasiness this area has. All of what I've described is amplified in the pre-release version with Greenio capitalizing on that feeling leaving myself on edge while watching SM64 Classified. Nothing ever seems right here. This internal plexus talk is straight out of the Mario 64 iceberg. 
and so are a lot of the ideas and themes here which you can see if you have an eye for spotting these things. The most prominent of these being Mario's voice lines. They sound crazy, nothing like how you would think Mario would sound. Mario's animations match what was shown in pre-release footage too. The best example of this is Mario's running animation which is more upright compared to the final versions of the game. So Greenio, again, captures the look and feel of the pre-release versions of the game to a T. And that's what made the iceberg image and Mishkoza's initial video so interesting too. Same goes for the analog horror look. The aesthetics are all there and makes it so easy to just get lost in watching these videos. There's no jump scares either, just a lot of suspense and piecing together of things. That's what, in my opinion, makes an analog horror story great. Not getting rid of the great suspense for a cheap scare. If you want to get in on all of this and dig deeper, because there is more to see in other bonus Mario content like Declassified, The Lost Tapes, and Super Mario 64 odd findings that might relate back to everything we've seen, or you just want to check out Greenio's other content, I'll have that all linked in the description. Well, after that massive rabbit hole, let's finish off with Exploshy's Luigi Personality Quiz. Aha, <laughs> uh, we already have some strange things going on. Indigo Interactive. We have no idea who they are or how they got their hands on a Nintendo IP, legally or not. There's also this warning screen which is troubling to say the least. And now we have some concerning questions with 3 and 4. Are you aware of a stranger breathing down your neck? <laughs> Question 5 was so loud that I had to turn it down in post. You can thank me later, and this is where we start to see the analog horror aesthetic fully come in with the disfigured, dark, and distorted characters. Oh my god, they're so hot. Before we look at the results, let's take a look again at question 8, since question 7 is kinda meh except for this response you could pick. That's a nightmare of an image and segment and somehow the game can measure the player's heart rate. Things get strangely existential and it ends there. Player thinks it is better than other people. Player spends an alarming amount of time convincing itself of its own innocence. Player knows it is not innocent. Are you happy living like this? What a strange conclusion that really makes you want to look inwards at yourself, your ego, your shadow, your organs. Other than that, this is straight up goofy. I've tried taking it seriously but, oh man, is it hard when you're looking at a damn Luigi quiz. The description for this video is a bit jokey as well, with Exploshy explaining as well that this video is parodying the usual tropes of analog horror. And yeah, that's exactly what we see. The visuals, the sounds, the cryptic story and whatnot are all there. It's a neat little video and I'd recommend taking a look at it for yourself, and also take a look at the Exploshy channel. She makes some pretty interesting and cursed horror videos so if you're interested in all of that, and honestly, the channel is a massive rabbit hole in itself that you can get pretty lost in. I'll have the Luigi personality quiz and Exploshy's channel linked in the description.
So those were two pieces of disturbing Super Mario analog horror. One was an entire series spanning 14 videos with a very strong emphasis on an interwoven story, and the other was a one-off video on a spooky found game. And again, all of what was shown will be linked in the description. And honestly, I've only really scratched the surface here on Mario Analog Horror. You can find other videos and series with a simple search too. Perhaps I'll cover some more Mario Analog Horror and more Analog Horror in general. Germ has released a new Grizz Code Tapes video, Stuffy Studio seems to be starting up something new as well, so it might be time to jump back into those rabbit holes soon enough. But anyway, that's been me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, why not consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment about the video. I also noticed that the channel hit 50,000 subscribers, so thanks a bunch for that. You guys are awesome. And because of that, I'll have a 50,000 subscriber special in the form of an iceberg video about myself and exploring my channel. Oh, and of course, we can't forget about the shoutouts to my patrons. You guys are absolute legends, and I'll catch you all in the next one.